Hey, Bulls and Bears, JJ here. It's Saturday, December 18th, 2021. Thank you for being here. Uh, let's talk about this horrific scene from this home in Florida. In my opinion, it's horrific. We're going to talk about the details. I'm going to actually show you a video, but also stick around. We've got a housing market update. What's happening with prices, inventory, uh, sales? We're going to talk about all that, so stay tuned. But first, yes, this is a horrific scene. And uh, People and some other news outlets put this out a few days ago. Florida couple finds 80,000 bees in their home's shower wall amid bathroom renovation. Take a look at these photos. And actually, we're going to play a video that the homeowner took. Let's go ahead and play that right now. All right, now this was put out on TikTok. This is the person removing the bees narrating this video take a listen and i got a surprise when i started breaking away the tile behind this shower wall look at how much honey is packed away in here this is a seven foot long beehive the homeowners were getting tired of listening to the buzzing and the occasional random bee escaping the wall whenever they would use the bathroom this thing was incredible i'm gonna take them home to one of my apiaries Okay, nice, right? But let's take a look at some of the magnitude of this infestation. A hundred pounds of honey, a hundred pounds of honey. They had to pay this person $800 to get the bees out of the walls. And that included the patch up and the re finishing of the wall. But 800 or a um, hundred pounds of honey. What's honey now is about $3, $3 a pound. Oh, let's see. Kirkland Signature Wildflower Honey, $15 for three pounds. Okay, right about $3 a pound for the basic kind, you know, not the not the uh, wild or the raw honey. Just the basic, you know, $3 a pound. We'll go with that. And with 100 pounds of honey, $300 worth of honey, and actually even more expensive because it's organic, right? It's in the, it's in the hive still. So even more than three dollars a pound you get the picture it's still it's raw it's in the comb so if i was if this was my home and i was trying to get somebody to fix it, i would try to do it myself i would put on one of those uh, suits I'd, I'd have to find the price of the suit and all that you know i might try to do it myself depending on the cost but i would try to negotiate and say hey free honey 100 pounds of free honey all you have to do is come get it out of the wall and then i would have did the rest of the work myself as far as putting up the wall again uh, but that's a pretty costly repair and that just goes to show you that being a homeowner isn't always glamorous and glorious there's a lot of unexpected expenses that people uh happen just like the story right here but now let's get into the housing market news the housing market update here see look at that i turned a negative story something really awful for this homeowner and turned it into a positive 100 pounds of free honey no more calling me doom and gloom. All right, let's get into the housing market news, people. And this one is a pretty big one. Mortgage applications for refinances down 41% over a year ago. That's a big drop, 41%. Um, rates are rising. They're not in danger zone territory yet, but let's take a look at a chart here, mortgage rates. And we're taking a look right now at a 30-year fixed rate. And we see that we're not higher than we've been and this is a um, one-year chart. We're still not higher than we were back at the beginning of the year, April, in that range. But if the typical 30-year mortgage rate gets above, at or above, three point three and a quarter around there and stays above there for at least a few months, you're going to start seeing a big, big drop-off in the housing market. Now, will the money printers let that happen? I don't think so, but anything's possible. Uh, maybe they want to kind of like they're talking about raising interest rates next year. Maybe they want to ease into this and allow mortgage rates to rise. It's controlled through their bond purchases, through their securities and asset purchases. So the Fed can control which way these rates go. We can't predict the future. We don't um, try to do that because the Fed, they can change direction at any moment. But based on what we're seeing now, uh, rates are uh, rising. And what's going to happen? Please let me know down below. Will they let rates rise? Will we see more than three and a quarter percent, which is the danger zone. 
And I say danger zone because look already at just this uptick that we've seen here over the past six months and refinancers are already down 41%. Uh, here's what I think is going to happen with the housing market. I think they're going to let rates rise somewhat, see what happens. Kind of like the talk of rate hikes in 2022 and a pullback on the QE and what they're calling tapering. They're just putting that out there far into the future. They're talking about next year to see how the markets react. So I think that it's going to be similar in the housing market. If rates rise and you start seeing home prices drop or you start seeing sales drop drastically, then they're just going to come back in and lower the rates again. It's repeat of what we have seen over the past several decades. But we get closer and closer to zero. So at some point people are saying that they're no longer going to be able to control this. Well, they still have some tricks up their sleeve to keep this whole bubble propped up for longer. Believe me on that one. Uh, next, let's talk about months of supply. As rates are rising slightly, are we seeing more homes come on the market and stay in the market? Well, we saw an increase, especially over the past six months. Uh, then it dropped. Now we're up at around a little over six months supply. Now this is out of FRED. This is the Federal Reserve Economic Data. That's the uh, acronym FRED there. And this may be different than other statistics that you may look up, but we can still see a trend and we see that we're close to where we were at the beginning of the health crisis. Now we all know what happened, or at least you should know what happened was there was a mad rush to buy homes, people moving out of the cities, more people working from home, um, more people just in fear of the health crisis wanted to uh, move to a different place, maybe somewhere out in the country. But what happened since then, we're going to talk about home ownership next, is the mad rush subsided and we're seeing inventory creep up. So if we go higher than what we saw here in late 2018, that's going to be a telling sign for the future and the direction of the housing market. So we're going to keep an eye on it. But let's talk about home ownership and the home ownership rate here. And we look at a five-year chart here. This was updated just uh, last month. And we see the inverse of what we see with inventory. Inventory dropped because demand increased so much. So we saw the home ownership rate increase as more people bought homes, especially people um, that rushed out during this time right here when the health crisis first came out. Uh, but look what's happened since then. Home, home ownership has declined since then meaning a lot of those people that went out and bought ended up selling and a lot of times they sold to an investor so when investors buy properties it's not counted as home ownership when they say home ownership they're talking about a owner occupied home so owner occupied home ownership is declining that tells you more investors are buying more people buying second homes third homes uh, more mega corporations are coming in and buying lots of homes so when that happens the home ownership rate decreases. Now, what could happen? It's anybody's guess, uh, but typically what happens, um, companies that come in and invest in homes, uh, institutions, a lot of times they're also playing with debt. Um, so consumers, a lot of us get a 30 year mortgage, but also you have a lot of these investment firms that are leveraged and some of them highly leveraged. Now, what's gonna happen if we start seeing turbulence in the housing market? Well a repeat of 2008, uh, the big hedge funds, the institutions, the banks, they will continue to get unlimited uh, resources, unlimited rescue programs, while the US average homeowner, the average consumer, the average working person uh, doesn't get the bailout. So I could continue to urge caution in your decision if you're gonna buy a home. Look at what happened with the, uh, the B expense with what we saw at the beginning. Unexpected expenses, repairs, uh, especially now with these elevated home prices, it only takes a couple big repairs to throw your finances into peril when your mortgage payment takes up 30, 40, sometimes 50% of your income. You know, it's very risky. So uh, stay cautious, folks, in these markets. And I wish you all the best. And I want to remind everybody, please send prayers out to our Kentucky and uh, people in those states that were affected by the tornadoes. There's a couple people down in comments. Uh, so please, prayers to those people. Be kind and uh, wishing the best. Stay well, everybody. Peace. Bye.